Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at Traveler Aliens of Charted Space, Volume 4. I actually really enjoyed this uh, this book. I, I bought this on PDF a couple months ago. I don't even know if the print copy is out yet or not. But um, what we get in this book is a lot of fun. It's written by Darren Balmer. And uh, does he does a really nice job. What I especially liked about this book was these were four races I really didn't have a lot of background on. I've been reading Traveler for quite a while now, and I've read many versions of books about the Hivers and the Vargir and the Aslan. It was nice to read a nice in-depth look at four races I wasn't familiar with. So this book covers the four races of the Surat, the Zatach, the Gervin, and the Tezcat. And these are four races I, of course, read a little bit about here and there, especially the Surat, but I had not uh, seen a deep cover on, and I, I enjoyed that. I, I like the biology that's brought out in this book. I think this book is very well done. The Surat, interestingly, claim that they're a major race because they had interstellar travel long ago before Jump Drive was introduced to their race. They used sublight vessels to go from star to star, so they say, hey, we're a major race too. And all the major races say, okay, that's great. Why don't you guys go sit over there at the kiddie table? We're a major race. We develop jump drive on our own. So there's a little bit of contention there. The Surat are actually humans. They were uplifted, or not uplifted, but modified by the ancients when they were brought from Terra and brought to their home world. That's where they're all Harriets, so they can survive their, their home world. Kind of neat looking and I just thought it was a, a neat idea for humans to look a little less human, if you will. We get a look at the society, the diet. Nice little artwork throughout. They are nature-loving, and they are not really all that hostile. One common theme in this, a lot of these races really aren't that hostile. Not the Tezcat, though, boy. So we get a deep look at their art and culture. What they do for recreation. Their business dealings, everything you'd want to do in here. The military, they have their own cultural region. These guys, uh, their homeworld is Ilelish, which of course was part of a, a rebellion against the Imperium. And as a penalty for that, part of their world was raised by Imperial fleets. Uh, the equatorial regions uh, were destroyed as a way of always reminding them never to do it again. But they were granted a cultural region eventually. So we get a look at the regional security force, regional criminal police organizations, the home world itself of Ilelish. Nice look at the system. Native life forms. I always like that about these. The imperial nobility. We'll get a look at their starport, the government, the law level. Just all kinds of goodies in here. Nice deep dive on this race. I enjoyed it. Some animals native to their planet, Ilelish. I like the artwork on these animals. These are really cool. I liked it. And then a nice look at their long history. So the, this book just really brings all four races out. They're pretty much everything you're going to want on the races to go ahead and build them into your game. And uh, I really like it. I like that we get, after the history section, we get a nice timeline. And then how to play Surat Travelers. And everything you, you would need to do to, to play and run a traveler of this race. And we even get some of the uh, careers they can have. Regional criminal police organization. Regional security force. And then we get a nice central supply catalog for different things that are unique to Surat. I always like a good central supply catalog in these. Things you can... Have the characters used, but also just introduced in general in your game. I love the living fur coat. I thought that was really cool uh, right there. Um, and then we've got High Guard of the Surat, and we get a nice look at some of their different vessels. We get a courier, a customs cutter. I always like customs ships. Those play a big part in the travelers' lives. Patrol Corvette, and nice top-down deck plans. This was published in 23. And then we take a look at the Zatak. Zatak are, um, they are an alien species, the first alien species found by the Hivers. And they are very similar in 
disposition to hivers. They're they're kind of pacifistic. They're uh, but they're excellent managers. So the hivers, being what they are, went ahead and manipulated them a little bit to make them even better managers than they had been. And uh, it says here, in many ways, they share some of the psychology of the hivers, but generally not to as great an extent. They're not aggressive. They're pacifistic and highly cooperative. And then they, they run as a matriarchy. And they're uh, used as managers and such by the hivers. Uh, they're interesting. I'm not. These would be a good NPC race, in my opinion. Although, in a few seconds, we're going to see you can pl play them as a a character if you want to. We got to look at their home world and some of the native life forms where they are in the home world over by the, the hivers over in the gateway area, and not necessarily right at gateway, but in that area. And animals unique to their planet, which I like. I like the way some of these looked. So, the talk history, we get a nice long look at that. Uh, if you can tell, I found these guys a little less interesting simply because they're pacifistic. Uh, they have an alignment government and they are subject to the hivers. So, I don't do a ton over in Gateway. I started my games out there in Gateway, but I haven't done Gateway in a long, long time. Uh, so, this this one was, eh. Uh, Zatak Travelers, we get a nice look at their traits as travelers. Background skills, pre-education, role-playing as Zatak. And then we could be Zatak Interstellar Ground Force. Zatak Interstellar Space Force. And then we get a central supply catalog for Zatak, which I liked. And we get a nice look at uh, drones. They use drones a lot since they are personally not great fighters. So there's a lot of robots and drone, drones used in their military and their policing. They have a weapon that kind of uh, it charges up the uh, pleasure zone of most brains and makes everybody, they surrender because you're having this bliss. Uh, that's kind of the make my day from the charted space novels of Larry Niven. I thought that was pretty cool. And then we get a nice look at the vehicles of this attack. Some more drones. And then the high guard of this attack. So we get a nice long look at this race. I did like it. I enjoyed reading it. Uh, again, because of where my campaigns mostly are, which is for me, usually behind the claw. I don't know how much I'll use them, but there's nothing to stop me from taking this race and plunking them somewhere behind the claw and having them interact with my travelers. So we get a nice look at a merchant vessel, a patrol corvette, love patrol corvettes, whatever race, destroyer, this guy displaces 5,000 tons, and a carrier. So all really nice ships. The next race in our book, these are, this race number three, are the Gervin. These guys can look a little bit like Terran otters. With uh, They have six limbs. And uh, it's another matriarchal society that was first encountered by the Hivers. But they were a very aggressive society. So what the Hivers did is they manipulated the Gervins. Instead of making them want for territory, they made them want for money and material things. And this manipulation took hold and makes these guys great interstellar traders which, of course, the Hivers then use to benefit themselves and the Gervins. It's a matriarchy. The males are virtually uh, just there for reproduction purposes. They're not as intelligent or large as the females, and they hold a lesser place in society because of it. We get a nice look at uh, the Gervins. Grooming is a very important thing for them. It's a social bonding thing. They seal deals with it uh, amongst their own kind. It's very interesting. We get a look at their government, the law, the dress, art, and architecture. A nice deep dive into the Gervins. What they do for recreation, business. This is the part I really enjoyed. I like their business, their language. And then we get the Gervin history. The rise of civilization, the arrival of the Hivers, and how the Hivers manipulated, not how they, but that the Hivers manipulated the Gervins into changing their aggression into something that the Hivers could use. And then the Democratic Interstellar, or the Gervin Interstellar Democratic Republic, is the government that they have under the Hivers. 
And you can be a member of, of, they have a group called the Gervin Interstellar Democratic Republic Patrol. Beautiful artwork there. I love that. That's probably my favorite picture out of this book. And then we get a look at how you can be a Gervin traveler. How to role play a Gervin. And then we get a look at the High Guard. We did not get any kind of central supply for the Gervins, which was surprising to me. But we get a look at a trade scout, which makes sense. A family trader. A merchant man. A small freighter. Everything centered around uh, and mer mercantile things, enterprise. And then we get a look at the fourth race in this. And I kind of like these guys. And these guys are going to definitely be showing up on my table. These are the Tez cats. They are a humanoid species that sometimes are confused with the Aslan. And they're a very aggressive species. And they live in the Great Rift. They're not terribly far from uh, Reft and, and other sectors like that. So they're in the Rift, but they have the ability to do multiple jumps. They've designed their ships for that. Uh, so they'll have a jump three ship that can do three jumps on available fuel, that kind of thing. So they can move around and they have their own little empire going there. They're very aggressive. They don't tolerate outsiders well at all. In fact, they first encountered Droin and decided that the Droin were demons out of their ancient past, and they slaughtered the group of Droin that they encountered, which led to all kinds of uh, long-term problems with the Droin. They're very xenophobic. If you are captured by them for some indiscretion, they will t turn you physically into a Tezcat. They consider that a way of rehabilitating you, and you can join their society once it all takes. It's kind of interesting. And we get a look at their law, their dress art and ar ar architecture, what they do for recreation, how they conduct business, the military, which is very strong, Navy operations, their written spoken language, moods and gestures, and then we get a look at their home world. I enjoyed this. This is probably my favorite of the four in here. And there we have where they are. They're just to the... Uh, their, uh, Deneb is Corward from where they are. Trojan Reach is Spinward. Gushamag and Verge. So they're right there in the Great Rift, and they have their own little empire going in there. They do uh, go out to other parts of uh, charted space, and they can be encountered elsewhere. I think I'm going to be introducing these guys soon into my campaign in District 268, just because they're really fun. I love that starport. We take a look at their law level, their military, places and events, animal encounters. We get a nice look at Various animals native to the planet. I like the look of both those animals. I like all of this. This is just really nice. Again, a nice look, this time at the Tezcat history. And they're fighting and such amongst themselves. And then once they got to the stars amongst against other alien races, because as I said, they're quite xenophobic when they first encounter with Droin. And then the Imperium. And then we get a nice look at their timeline. Then we, how to be a Tezcat Traveler. So there you go. If you want to play one of these guys, you can. You can be a Shaper Priest. Shaper is their religion. You can be a Soul Hunter. And then you get a Central Supply Catalog for Tezcat. So this is a little bit more filled out uh, than the, the previous one. And you get the High Guard of the Tezcat. And very aggressive High Guard it is. Small Fighters, Medium Fighters, Stealth Fighter a boarding skiff, a heavy fighter, a gunboat, a torpedo boat, refueling shuttle, that's not that military, <laughs> a guard ship, and then something we need to populate, there we are, the rest of the deck plan, a light cruiser, and then a fleet carrier, which is their biggest vessel, I'm sorry, the brood ship is their biggest guy. And then nice top-down deck plans. And then we get a nice index for the entire book. And then the back cover. I really enjoyed this. I'm going to hazard to say that this has been my favorite one of the four Mongoose Alien volumes so far. I think, in my case, more because it was newer stuff to me. It wasn't something that had gone before with other versions of, uh, you know, the Aslan, the Zodani, 
this was something that was pretty much new. And even if I had read a little bit here and there about it, like with the Surat, it was still fleshed out greater than I'd seen before. And I really, I found this book pretty immersive. I really enjoyed it. Very happy to have it in my library. And I do recommend it completely. Got a little ad for Fantasy Grounds Academy. There we go. Uh, so I do recommend this book. I, I absolutely pick it up. Uh, if, you, if you're looking to build your alien races a little bit, the, uh, the Surat and the Tezcats were my personal favorites out of here. But I tend to like the more aggressive, more player character type races. But background races for NPCs and to fill out story are also fantastic and they add greatly to role playing. But that's all I've got today from page 121. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends and take a look at the Patreon. See if you can help me there. And I'll see you next time on page 121.